Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And previously we attempted to improve the thermals on this Oris RX 9070 XT. Unfortunately, the thermal pads, the 1.5 millimeter or even the one millimeter with an additional wouldn't work. Either I made the GPU core too hot or I made the memory modules too hot. So in preparation of getting ready for Battlefield 6, we did it again. This time getting the correct thermal pad size, 1.25 millimeter, and I put liquid metal on this thing. And I have to tell you, it's definitely improved it, and the game played so great. So this Oris 9070 XT originally came with some thermal putty, or thermal gel, as Oris calls it. And the problem with uh, that is when it was vertical, right, and you can see my two slots back there where I could have the GPU vertical, the thermal putty, at least the first people that bought this 9070 XT on release would actually leak out the bottom of the card onto the PCIe slot. Uh, if you have it in a horizontal setting, you probably wouldn't see that, but a lot of people were complaining about it. We talked about that in a previous video. So I tried to replace the thermal putty that's on the memory, the VRMs, the MOSFETs with thermal pads, but it didn't work out last time. However, when I recorded the teardown of this, the video got corrupted. But it's very simple. There's really four main screws. If I zoom in here, you're gonna see four main screws around the core, right? One right there, one right there, and then there's two more that's right underneath the M.2 slot. One, two. And then you're gonna have six outer screws that are basically holding the heat sink onto the back plate, especially one here and then one over there in the corner. And that's it. The only problem, and I would urge caution, is that Oris used proprietary fan connectors on this, and there's an RB, RGB connection that lights this guy up right here. So when you go to pull the heatsink off, just be mindful of those connections. Try not to break them. But the proprietary pinout that they have for their RGB fans is something that's going to hinder you from lifting the card up completely off the heatsink. Either way, Let's switch over to the rest of the content that's not corrupted so I can show you the liquid metal application. Now, real quick though, what did I use? I showed you this before on the channel, but the Sally Hansen Clear Nail Polish. This guy right here. So Sally Hansen Color Therapy Clear Nail Polish. This is old, so it's a little bit more viscous than it normally should be. Um, and Thermal Grizzly actually makes their own uh, conformal coating that you can use but something like this will work because we need to protect the SMDs around a the die right so say for example we're looking at this PCB that's the die there's gonna be little components right so little SMDs around the GPU die that we want to protect it's gonna be inside the silver square or rectangle uh, then there's gonna be the SMDs in the green PCB and then the actual GPU silicon that's what that Sally Hansen was used for to prevent any type of connection or bridging between the liquid metal and some of the components surrounding the GPU core. Once we did that, we replaced the thermal pads, of course, cleaning up the thermal putty just on the memory modules. I did leave it for the rest of the like MOSFETs and VRMs. And here is the rest of that session. Switching over to the phone, I just wanted to show you how thin the liquid metal should be spread on the heat sink and actually what I did to kind of figure out the pattern is I lifted it up as close as I possibly could to make sure that the layout's good and this should look like a wet coat uh, shouldn't be too thick I might have put a little bit extra than I wanted to on there uh, but if I use the q-tip that comes with it which are um, non-shedding q-tips they're black but you can find them online somewhere but I was able to get the placement just about right. So again, either I really messed this up or we just improved the thermals on this thing significantly. We'll compare it to our previous video where we attempted to do this last time, but thinner thermal pads, liquid metal, uh, nickel plated copper. Will it work? Well, it's only one thing to do. Let's put it back together and just got the screws here. It's really only four main screws plus six more to hold this heat sink onto this device. So just very carefully going to plug in everything as I showed you in my previous video while flipping this guy over. We're gonna leave the thermal putty on the uh, VRMs and MOSFETs. And I did push, you know, like some of it was kind of spilling off. So I did push it back on there so it makes sufficient contact with its components. 
And then um, I guess we'll launch for a mark and other benchmarks and see if I killed this thing. If this liquid metal leaks out beyond this IHS or this um, green PCB and silver uh, outer shell onto components anywhere on this card or if I flip it over and it drips, like, game over, man. You're not getting that off. It's going to suck. So, again, I either really screwed up or we made this card sufficiently better getting ready for Battlefield 6. So far, so good. We booted up, no problem. And I'm looking at the idle temperatures. They're looking pretty dang good, even though the fan speeds is at zero RPM. The real question is, what happens when we put a workload on it, which is what we're about to do. I'm gonna do a couple of different workloads and benchmarks, uh, you know, 3D mark, fur mark, so on and so forth. And we'll see what those temperatures level out at. And the biggest one is, when I was playing Battlefield 5 in preparation for Battlefield 6, uh, I saw that the memory junction temperature and the hotspot temperature climbed up pretty high, close to 100 degrees Celsius. So if we can stay away from that under load in gaming, that'd be really good. So far, so good with Furmark. We are down on both the GPU hotspot and the memory junction temperature. You can see on the memory junction temperature, we're at 92, 90 degrees, somewhere in there. The hotspot temperature max is at 94 or ni around 95, and then the hotspot's 91, whereas compared to before, the hotspot was at 99 to 100 degrees Celsius and the hotspot temperature max was 99, memory junction 90, so two degrees warmer, but the memory is still holding up good. And another thing I want to point out is uh, even though we were hitting about 100 C on hotspot and junction temperature, the fan speeds were a lot higher. So about 2300 RPM here, 2400 RPM here, and right now we're only sitting around 2000 RPM. So 400 RPM less on Furmark and thermals are looking a lot better than they were before. Let's see what happens in a gaming load. After some battlefield testing, we are sitting around an average of 56.8 degrees Celsius on the core, the GPU core, maybe 59, 60, somewhere in there. Memory junction temperature of 88. Memory or GPU hotspot of 87 was the highest, average of 77. And then the GPU hotspot temperature max of 81.9, 91.4 is what we saw at the highest. And that's basically on par with what we're seeing with before, right? So the GPU hotspot is still hitting the, the top, which I'm guessing is the limits of the heat sink. But we did drop the core temperatures a little bit. And then we did drop the memory junction temperatures just a the hair. They're basically equal to one another. So whether you're using liquid metal or even uh, dural knot, which is what was on here before, we're basically running about the same. It's just we weren't making sufficient contact with the GPU core and the memory due to the thicker pads or having to use the putty with um, the th dural knot. You can see before, it's basically the same. The stock thermal solution that Oris had for this GPU compared to uh, liquid metal or dural knot or replacing the thermal pads, it's basically going to be about the same thing because the heat sink is the limiting factor and this heat sink is not small whatsoever but it, it can only dissipate so much heat but you can see gp core 59 uh 62 60.5 59 62 60.9 um 59 60 57.1 so two to three two to three degrees celsius drop on the core but memory again is basically about the same memory junction 86 89 max uh, then we saw 84, 89 max, and then after, even with liquid metal, 86, 88 max, so one degree difference there, with the hotspot temperature still hitting around 91, 92 degrees Celsius. So it did improve it, but why would you even use liquid metal? I would personally not recommend it. Your stock thermal solution would work just fine for this GPU, but if your thermal putty is leaking out because you got the first revision of this GPU, then obviously you can replace it with thermal pads and even just a regular dural knot or your favorite uh, thermal paste. Uh, adding liquid metal is not necessary, but I just wanted to see, because we knew that the heat sink was nickel plated copper, what would be the actual improvement. But let me know what your thoughts are. This GPU is now ready for Battlefield 6. Hope to see you out there. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit that like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out additional links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.